Hi hey guys, this is Marcus from PetalumaFamilyTherapy.com and uh, today I want to talk with you about a, an interesting topic that is really, uh, say some ways close to my heart, in other ways uh, I think people who've worked with me for a while would say that it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. And that is that uh, it's really frequent, you know, especially around uh, this, type of, this time of year, you know, I'm making this video in April, um, that I'll hear uh, people describe, you know, adults, parents, teachers, uh, just a, a lot of people describe a kid as being lazy, and so maybe he's doing difficult, uh, having difficulty in school, uh, maybe not doing his chores around the house, and they'll say, well, you know, you know, part of it is that he's just lazy, you know. And very frequently, um, the the kid will also, you know, nod his head, you know, you know high school kid or junior high kid will say, oh yeah, that's true, you know, and, and that always kind of, you know, irks me a little bit for. A number of reasons. So what I want to talk about today is the problem with the word lazy or with the label lazy. So first, right off the bat, um, you know, I have uh, an issue with uh, labels of any kind. And I think if we're uh, practiced in uh, compassionate communication or nonviolent communication, uh, we realize that the use of labels to describe people's behavior, whether it's you know, bad behavior or you know, lazy behavior, oppositional behavior, um, you know, inappropriate behavior. Inappropriate, you know, can be used skillfully at times. Uh, but the, the use of labels to describe behavior is often a conversation stopper, okay? Um, also, in the, in the fact that if you use a label, it can be used as a uh, way of describing somebody's character in a way that implies that this is a persistent character trait that can't really be changed. And not only does that sort of give people an out in terms of an excuse you know, for uh, acting a certain way, but it also limits their perception that they have an ability to change their behavior. So if you describe somebody as lazy, then they'll see that as part of their identity, that I am just a lazy person, it's something I can't really change about myself. And it stops the conversation right there, instead of moving it into um, sort of a realm where we can talk about, well, what is actually going on here? What is actually leading to this behavior and contributing to this behavior um, that could be changed maybe easily or maybe through a lot of hard work? Uh, but you want to frame the conversation and frame your own attitude um, towards your kid's uh, behavior in, one, in a way that will encourage opportunities for change. And describing somebody as lazy or bad or something like that does not you know, give that opportunity. Now what drives that though, I think you know, it's, it's one thing to just say, well that's a label so you shouldn't use it, um, but that doesn't do much to address the underlying belief that a lot of times parents or teachers or uh, you know, any adults in kids' lives have, and that is um, that the, the behavior might actually be driven by an underlying you know, character trait or something that was kind of born or you know, maybe the kid is spoiled or something like that. And, and can't change it. So today I want to talk about, just briefly, um, a few of the things that you'll find if you dig a little bit deeper into uh, the behavior of somebody who appears to be, you know, quote unquote, lazy. Each of these topics probably could be, you know, the topic of another you know, video or article um, altogether, but I just kind of want to go over them briefly to move our minds in the direction of talking about how to actually address underperformance in a way that can lead to positive change and can open up to creative possibilities. Um, the first of these is addressing underperformance from the standpoint of behavior. So uh, a learned behavior is something that you know, can be ingrained over a short period of time or even a very long period of time. So the first thing that I'm thinking in my mind whenever somebody says that a kid is lazy is, well, who enabled him to be lazy? Okay, so it's very hard for someone to actually be lazy on their own with no help from anybody else. Okay, so if you have uh, things done for you or you're able to uh, take a passive attitude and uh, not reap any consequences from that, you know, um, uh, if you're able to sit back and say, well, you know, somebody else will do that for me, and then somebody else actually comes in and does it for you, then you're reinforcing the behavior in that way. So kids need the opportunity to uh, realize the consequences of their 
behavior, okay? And that doesn't mean they need the opportunity to be punished, but what that means is they need to realize the actual cause and effect relationship between their behavior, all right? Um, you know, if somebody doesn't help out with dinner, then maybe the dinner won't be ready on time and they're going to be really hungry, okay? So if, if it's your kid's opportunity, uh, you know, in that evening to help cook dinner and they don't want to do that, for the parent then to... Um, get mad at them and yell at them and say, well, you know, you really should do this. Why are you so lazy? But then go ahead and fix dinner is going to teach them that if I just sit in my seat long enough, then somebody else is going to do it for me. So that's one thing. So a, a behavioral response or a learned behavior. However, you know, I think more often um, it has to do, especially around school, with discouragement. Okay? There's only so many times that somebody can go through the process of trying their best and then seeing that it doesn't work, trying their best and seeing that they don't get a good grade on something, trying their best and seeing that they're confused and everybody else in the class seems to get it, before you lose motivation really quickly to keep doing that. And so from the, the child's perspective, from the teenager's perspective, that's usually where I'm looking first. So from the adult's perspective, looking more behaviorally. From the kid's perspective, I'm looking more at discouragement. And what things might be contributing to this? Maybe a learning disorder, maybe um, a hostile environment with some peers. Uh, you know, maybe it's just a, a history of having just a lot of difficulty understanding something and not having good study skills that have led to this behavior that adults are terming lazy. Okay, so discouragement is another big factor there. Another factor in uh, underperformance, I feel, can be physical health or physical fitness. Sometimes the issue is not so much directly related with, um, say, the schoolwork itself or the chores itself themselves, but it can also be related with the overall level of health. Is this kid getting enough exercise? Um, do they have a good diet? Is there some kind of an illness that is undetected here? Um, either uh, you know, you know, physical illness, uh, you know, stomach problems, or you know, any number any number of things, hormonal imbalance, to uh, depression or a high level of anxiety or something like that that is contributing to underperformance uh, in, in any variety of areas. Another big one, and of course as a therapist I'm looking for this, is unresolved emotional issues. So if uh, there's been a trauma or there's a chronic kind of uh, relationship issue within the household, or difficulty making friends, or something that's contributing to just kind of a, a general malaise or anxiety or, or pain emotionally on the part of the child, then that can also contribute um, to uh, underperformance in school or in sports or, or in, around the house and that kind of thing. So looking for what may be underneath uh, that behavior on the surface, which some people might cause, call lazy, but taking a more compassionate attitude and saying, you know, sometimes it's really hard to focus on your schoolwork when you're constantly worried that uh, your best friend is not your best friend anymore. You know, he seems like he's turned his back on you in some ways. What's going on there? So getting um, on the kids' level to what really matters to them that may, in their mind, be taking priority over the longer-term uh, you know, school-related issue or chore-related issue or something like that, connecting in that way. The last one that I'll talk about uh, has to do with that long-term uh, mindset, and that's, you know, a lot of kids have, or, you know, adults too, have difficulty making a connection between cause and effect, and especially when that cause and effect is drawn out by years, okay? So a high school freshman, some of them can understand that, okay, now my grades count. It's a cumulative grade point average, and you know, I, I have to... Uh, build up on this because someday I'm going to want to apply to college and want to get into a good college and that's going to lead to me having a better job, etc., etc. Some kids, that's really, really far off. I mean, that's like, that's like years, years in the future. So connecting the current efforts to something that is a little bit more immediate. Okay, so that may be some kind of a reward it may be more based upon uh, a positive relationship with their teacher or a positive relationship with some other kids, some other peers who also value school. Okay? 
Um, so exactly what that positive reward is or that, that positive feedback that a kid can get is really uh, negotiable in some ways and can be individualized uh, to the kid. But in connecting it, for kids who have difficulty really reaching out into the future and making that connection, you want to find something that's more on their developmental level, that's appropriately on their developmental level, so that um, it's not with a lecture or threats about, oh, your life is going to be so bad, it's going to be so hard if you don't go to college, or, you know, you, why are you so lazy, don't you see that this is going to lead to you being poor and homeless? I mean, threats like that that are like way off in the future are not not effective and it's not a respectful and kind way uh, to talk to your child. So recognizing that they need to have positive feedback for their efforts and connecting to that, that to something that is more immediate in their world uh, can be helpful. So that's just touching the surface, um, but again I want to put that out there because of that buzzword lazy, but overall I want to just encourage us to look deeper uh, beyond just the labels that we can put on our kids' behavior, but also on our own uh, behavior, and see some of the things that might be driving that. So again, I'm Marcus Moore, a licensed marriage and family therapist in Petaluma, and the website is PetalumaFamilyTherapy.com.